Hallelujah. Thanks to God. Welcome to today's Tea Time and Harvest Broadcast. Happy Easter to each and every one of you. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Today is the day that we acknowledge the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And as we think about this week's celebration or recognition of the life that Jesus has, I want to speak with you about a thought or a subject that Christ is our hope. He is our hope of life. And so that's what I'm going to speak with you about today by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I want each and every one of us to be inspired by the fact that Christ is risen. And let that be our hope, regardless of whatever situations or circumstances we may face in life. And so if you're going to be following along with us today, we're going to use a portion of scripture as our foundational text. And you can make note of this for your records and for your meditation time. Somebody says, Christ, our hope. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're going to look at verses number 15 through, I believe, 19. I believe 15 through 19 as our foundational text. And this is going to be speaking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is the foundation of or the central hope that we as believers have. For if this fact is in fact not a fact, then our faith is in vain. But we have every reason to believe, based on the account of the witnesses as given in Scripture, based on historical uh, evidence, that Christ is indeed risen and that is the hope that we have that not only will we be raised back to life with him but all of those who have preceded us in Christ will be raised with him as well that means that we will not perish that this life is not the end that there is eternal life to come so let's go ahead and look at our foundational text first and then we'll get into some of the uh, reading we'll get a word of prayer we'll get some exhortation on this word but I pray that you already have your ears pricked and that there's an excitement stirring up in each and every one of you because this is certainly good news for the world this is certainly good news for all men women and children this is good news for every Kendrick tongue, tribe, and nation of the earth. And I'm very excited that God has given me the opportunity to share this message with you on this day. So we have a hope beyond this life, saints of God. So again, we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 15 through 19. And I'm going to read from the New International Version. Somebody says, Hallelujah. Yes, we ought to celebrate this good news on this day, saints of God, for Christ is risen. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 15 reads, More than that, we have been found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your hope is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are, of all people, most to be pitied. Christ, our hope, let us pray. Hallelujah. 
Glory to your majesty, dominion, and splendor, and power, O God. We thank you today for the power of your resurrection. We thank you for the power of new life. We thank you for the power of eternal life. And we pray for the power of abundant life upon those who are listening to the sound and hearing of our voice today. Father, we thank you for this power, for this power has raised Christ from the dead, and this power raises up, us up from circumstances and situations that try to bury us. We thank you, Father, that this power has preceded us for all of those who have already perished in Christ will be made alive in Christ. Father, we thank you for this hope that we have today, that this power also manifests itself in healing and provision and salvation for the lives of your people. May your spirit and your power go forth over the earth afresh today, O God, to minister hope to those who are hopeless, to minister healing to those who are sick, to minister provision for those who are alike, to minister salvation for those who are lost today. Oh God, we thank you for this hope that we have. And our hope will not make us ashamed, for we know that Jesus is alive and that we have life through him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Someone give the Lord a great big hallelujah this morning. Hallelujah. Christ, our hope of life, saints of God. This is what we're going to talk with you about today on this Resurrection Sunday, this time where the world, not only does the church take notice of this historical fact, but the world takes notice of this. Even the world cannot deny, in spite of all of whether it manifested worldviews, it is unmistakable, it is undeniable that something miraculous happens with this man called Jesus. And as Paul talked to the church in Corinth, I'd like to speak to us today. As Paul reminded the Corinthian believers, I want to remind you today. I want to remind each and every one of you that you have hope in Christ. You have hope in the fact that Christ has indeed been risen from the dead, that we shall be raised back to life along with him, and that those who have preceded us will also rise with Christ. So without the power of the resurrection, if Christ has not been raised. And Paul even says, if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. So he, he wanted to lay a premise for his hearers. And I want to say the same thing for you today because there's so many different worldviews. Sometimes you read these stories or the account of scripture about Jesus, it can seem far-fetched. It could seem unreal. It could seem impossible. But I want you to know that they children of God that Jesus specializes in the impossible. He did what was impossible for man so that it would become possible for us. For we serve a supernatural God and so the fact that Jesus has been risen from the dead testifies to the miraculous power of Jesus. There's no explanation for this account that has permeated the entire world for over 2,000 years without being refuted. And so whether people accept this as a fact or not, it can be denied. It cannot be denied. And Paul was given an apologetic statement to the early believers as we're looking at our foundational text today. And I want you also, children of God, to be able to make a defense for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We should all be able to state undeniable faith that we have in Jesus. And all of our faith has to be based on the facts. The facts that we read about, about this resurrection story of Jesus. 
about the women going to the tomb on the third day and finding the tomb empty and the, the disciples, the apostles went and they saw that the tomb was empty, that Jesus' body was not there. So the eyewitness accounts that Jesus appeared to many people after his death. Even historical accounts from other historians that bear witness to the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the fact that his body has never been found, that he was never been 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 accounted for, other than that visible eyewitness examples that were given by many after he was supposedly dead. So our faith is based on those facts, children of God. And that fact is what provides the hope that we have today. This is the hope that we have for healing, the hope that we have for deliverance, the hope that we have for provision. Hallelujah. The hope that we have that whatever we go through in life, that the power of God, the same power that raised Jesus back to life, is available and active in the world today. Hallelujah. And this is our hope. Someone says our hope. Yes, Jesus Christ is our hope for life. And he's our hope for eternal life. For if this fact, the Apostle Paul is saying, if this fact is indeed not a fact, if in fact Jesus has not been raised back to life. If in fact Paul says the dead are not raised Christ, then Christ has not been risen either. But that's a mighty big if, thanks to God. So Paul was trying to speak to the early believers, and I pray today that as we listen to this message, as we celebrate this day, and maybe some people listening who are still scoffers or skeptics, you still may not have fully believed or embraced the message of Jesus Christ, death, burial, and resurrection. But I pray today that as we have this dialogue with you that your ears will be opened, your hearts will be opened, that your mind can conceive and your heart can believe the message today. So let's back up to the first verse of this chapter. We're talking about 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where the Apostle Paul is speaking to the early church in a place called Corinth about the resurrection of Christ. To be resurrected means to be brought back to life again. In this case, Jesus was brought back to life physically with a new body that was incorruptible, that would not face death again. And he ascended back into the heavens where he is now seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for each of us. This is our hope. The hope of the, the hope that Christ intercedes for us. But if, somebody say if, if none of these things are true, then our faith is vain. So here the Apostle Paul says to the church in Corinth, and I want each and every one of you to listen today, whether you're a believer or non-believer, this is your hope, this can be your hope, I pray it is your I pray it will become your hope as you believe upon these words. Verse 1 of 1 Corinthians 15, we see Paul says, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. Verse 3, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance. And here are the things that are first important. This is the order of things that are most important for you, saints of God. Just as the Apostle Paul says to the believers here, I say to each and every one of you, this is the matter of first importance. One, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Secondly, verse 4, that he was buried. Number three, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Fourthly, and that he appeared to Cephas, 
and then to the twelve. He goes on to say, after that he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Verse 7, then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. We see here Paul is giving a reminder to the early believers of the facts of their faith. Some of you may not have been aware of these facts, but I pray today as you examine these scriptures, as you meditate upon these scriptures and, and, and allow them to soak into your spirit, that you will also come to believe on this gospel, which is the good news of Christ's resurrection. Just as Paul reminded the other believers, I want to remind each and every one of you today, my brothers and sisters, I want to remind you, no matter how long you've been in Christ, no matter how long you've been in church, no matter uh, how long you have uh, uh, celebrated Easter or the Resurrection Sundays, I want to remind you of the gospel that has been preached to us. That I pray that you have already taken your stand on it, and if not, that you will take your stand on it. Because by this gospel, it is because of this good news that we are saved. If we hold firmly to the word that has been preached. Otherwise, our belief is in vain. We must hold on to this truth that Christ is risen before that is our only hope of victory in life and victory beyond this life. Just as the Apostle Paul said, I have also personally believed upon the name of the Lord Jesus. I have personally believed that Jesus Christ died for the sins of the world. I believe this. I also believe that he died for my sins. Hallelujah. And I have confessed those sins. And I not only confessed that with my mouth, but I believe that in my heart. Just as Paul says that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was the perfect Lamb of God. He shed his blood for to remove the stain of our sin and the guilt of it. I believe this today, saints, that because Christ died for my sins, that I have hope that I can be forgiven today. And this is the hope that each and every one of us need to have in life today. For all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But because of Christ's death and burial and resurrection, he has forgiven us. He has pardoned us. I also believe, as Apostle Paul says in verse 4, I believe that he was buried. And you only bury people that are dead. You don't bury people who are alive. So we have to embrace and be reminded of our, the facts of our faith today. Somebody say our hope. Yes, these facts of our faith gives us hope in spite of whatever situation we may face. In spite of any whatever impossible situation, whatever difficult circumstances we may face, we have hope that the power of God that raised Jesus from the dead is at work in our lives today. I believe, as Apostle Paul says in verse 4, I believe that he was buried. I believe that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. I believe that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. I, I believe that he appeared to the more than 500 brothers that were alive at the time. I believe what the Apostle Paul says and reminds the early church of that he appeared to James, and that he appeared to all the apostles, and that they continue to share this good news that somehow, some way, every nation of the earth has been exposed to this message. Even though some nations try to ban it, some nations try to deny it, some nations try to quell this news from being spread. Oh, the fact that some nations try to deny it is a verification of the power that this message has, saints of God. For if this message was a false message, if this message had no truth to it, we wouldn't mind. Why would the nations 
care if the name of Jesus was proclaimed in the streets? Why would the nations care if Jesus' message of death and resurrection was proclaimed on public television, in public places, if it has no truth, if it has no merit, if it has no power, there will be no resistance to this message, saints of God. The very fact that in some nations of the earth, people are persecuted for believing upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Some people are persecuted, put in prison, beaten, and some even put to death because of a public proclamation of this gospel that I'm proclaiming to you today. Somebody say our hope. Oh, saints, all these facts are a testimony that our faith is not in vain. So the apostle reminded the other believers, and I pray today by the power of the Holy Spirit that you're being reminded that Jesus did in fact die for our sins, that he was indeed buried, and that he indeed rose on the third day. Hallelujah. And he appeared to many of the brethren, as the apostle talks about. And then finally in verse 9, the apostle says, And I also, not just based on the witness of others, but based on my own personal encounter with Jesus. Saints, this is what's going to be convincing for us today, not because somebody else said Jesus is alive, not because somebody else say they saw Jesus, but because you encountered Jesus. As the Apostle Paul said, I, I could have just took them at their word. I was there when they, when the, they placed the soldiers at Jesus' tomb. I, I was aware of the fact that the soldiers uh, did not know what happened when the earthquake and the stone was rolled away. I'm aware of the account of all these things. But Paul says in verse nine, and this is what it's gonna take for each and every one of us to truly be able to celebrate what we call Easter. In order for us to truly be able to recognize this day as a resurrection day, we have to happen to us what happened to the apostle in verse number nine. He says this, Verse 8, he says, And last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. Here's a question, saints of God. Have you just believed on the story of Easter? Have you just believed the witness and testimony of others? Or have Jesus appeared to you? For he is still alive today, saints of God. He's he lives in us. He lives in the earth by the power of his Holy Spirit. He's still manifesting himself in the hearts and minds of men, women, and children all over the earth. Even right now, saints of God, some of you may need to have a personal encounter with Jesus. He, needs, he may need to appear to you in order for you to embrace him as your hope for life to embrace him as your hope for salvation, to be able to be able to embrace him as your hope for deliverance and, and, and healing and provision today. Somebody say our hope, hallelujah. Paul says, I am the least of the apostles. He says that he did not even deserve to be called an apostle because he had persecuted the church of God. But verse 10, he says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. It took a hold upon me, he says, as I pray this message takes a hold of each and every one of you listening to my voice today. He said, even though I didn't deserve it because I was against Christ, I resisted Christ, I, I told people it wasn't true that he was alive. I denied the very message by which I was saved. But when I, but when I encountered Jesus, I realized that it had an effect on me. Saints of God, today when you encounter Jesus, it has an effect upon your life. It changes you. It transforms you by the renewing of your mind. 
It causes power and life and hope to be stirred up in you. Today, I know there's many people all around the world who need that hope. And today, I pray that as the celebrations of Easter, the celebrations of Resurrection Sundays all across the earth today would inspire this hope so that those who are hopeless will embrace it today. That is my prayer. This is the prayer, this is the good news of this gospel that I pray is proclaimed all across the earth today, thanks to God. And most importantly, I pray that it has already taken root in your hearts, that you've already embraced this hope, that you've already believed upon it. For if you have not embraced it, the Apostle Paul says, as we get to our foundational text, that if we personally have not embraced this message, if we personally have not encountered Jesus, if Jesus has not personally appeared to us and changed us and transformed us, it, was, it, it wasn't through anything that he deserved to get. It was by grace. None of us deserves it, saints of God. So it doesn't matter uh, whether you persecuted Christ, whether you resisted him, whether you disobeyed the words of God. By grace, you can be saved today and the same effect will take place in your life. Yes, somebody say our hope. Matter of fact, somebody say my hope. Make it personal. And so Paul says, as a result of the effect of this grace that I received, I worked harder than all of the others. He says, but I realized it wasn't me, but it was the grace of God that was with me. So whether then, verse 11, whether then, it is I or they. This is what we preach, and this is what you believed. And so once he laid that foundation for the facts for their faith, he wanted to give them what our foundational text was. He wanted to give, he wanted to refuel their faith. He wanted to remind them that they have a firm foundation for their faith based on the facts that have been stated. And I want every believer today to be refueled, to be refired, to share this good news with the world. But in order to share this good news with the world, you must embrace this good news yourself. Someone say again, our hope, and make it personal, my hope. Jesus Christ is my hope. And he's the hope of the whole world. Hallelujah. So now in our foundational text again, Paul says, I want to remind you about the gospel that we have preached to you. This is the gospel that I have personally believed. And in verse 12 he said, but, some of it but, but if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. It will be nothing more than just a fairy tale for the world to scoff at if it wasn't true. But we know that it is true based on the facts that we've already listed to you earlier in this chapter and now Paul is basically just asking them to, to look at yourself and ask yourself, do you really believe this message? Because if it's preached that he has been raised, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? And if there is no resurrection, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless and so is your faith. And more than that, we are found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. His death did not remove the penalty of it. When life is, this life ends, you will have no other life. Neither will those who have fallen asleep in Christ. They are all lost. If these facts are not true. 
And if only for this life, verse 19, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. We have all been deceived. We are most unfortunate to have believed a lie. But the hope that we have, children of God today, is that Christ has indeed risen from the dead. Verse 20 it says, But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ the first fruits. Then when he comes, those who belong to him, then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom of God to the God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power for he must reign, saints of God, until he has put all enemies under his feet. For he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet, children of God. And the last enemy, verse 26, the last enemy to be destroyed is death. For he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything, someone say everything, he has put under him. It is clear that this does not include God himself who puts everything under Christ. And when he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to to him who put anything under him, so that God may be all in all. In conclusion, children of God, now if there is no resurrection, verse 29, what will those do who are baptized for the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, why are people baptized? And as for us, why do we endanger ourselves every hour? He says, I face death every day. Yes, just as surely as I boast about you in Christ Jesus our Lord, I have fought wild beasts in Ephesus with no more than human hopes. What have I gained if the dead are not raised? Jesus Christ, our hope. Father, we thank you today. We thank you that as the Apostle Paul gave the early church a reminder of the facts for our faith, as he defended the gospel of Jesus Christ and gave us hope and encouragement that we can also believe upon the testimony of the saints and the witness of scripture, that we, our faith can be renewed and revived today because of the facts that Jesus Christ has indeed been risen from the dead. And we thank you, Father, that he rose in power. He rose in dominion in order that all his enemies will be placed under his feet and that the final enemy is death itself. So even as we go through life and we approach situations and circumstances that may be against us, we know that we have a powerful God who stands for us, the same God who raised Jesus from the dead raises us above our situations and circumstances in life. It will also raise us from death if we perish in this life. And as well as those that precede us in this life who have died in faith in Christ. It is our prayer today and our hope today, Father, that each and every one of us will be encouraged and inspired, that those that have not yet believed will come to know Jesus today, that they also will make Christ the hope for their life. For indeed, the dead are raised with Christ being the first fruits. Lord, we thank you today that Christ is our hope. May it be the hope of this world. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah and amen.